How's it going everybody? I know how much we love our fonts. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over my all-time favorites that every designer should have in their library. So this first one on the list is one of my all-time favorites and it's a dope vintage style font, Cabell Black. It has a ton of personality and it comes in actually all these different font weights from thin to extra bold. I like the thickest version, that's the black. It looks good and you know, bold. All caps, italicized, lowercase. And I think if you crimp the letters super tight, it really makes it shine. I used it here in this uh, vintage pasta raised chicken ad it works well for creating like a vintage look i also recently used it in the stranger things poster that i made um, i did some client work with it in the all caps for western digital there's some other references that really show this font in a good way super bold and something that every person should have in their library this next one's degular and it's my favorite sans serif as of recently um, all the ono oh type co fonts are really good this one goes from thin to black and there's also a couple of different alternate versions in there somewhere it looks good in both lowercase and all caps and it's kind of a little unique touch to some of the other grotesque sans serifs here's some stuff i use it on it looks really good in like swiss style things i actually created this poster in a different video use it in videos also and posters in the past i really like it because it adds a nice little touch from some of the other more boring sans serifs and here's some other references i found online that really show the font in a good way shout out to poster journal using it right here when adding a nice stroke to it, it looks good in all different applications you can see it in some more clean branding stuff as well as poster design whatever else you want to use it for first up for the serifs is this cool one ivy presto it's a beautiful serif and it's a great substitute for one of my favorites apple garamond except this one can actually be used commercially from thin to bold it looks good in all weights and the italicized version is really nice also i used it for some body copy in the fortnite vintage ad and you can see i mixed it with noia cabell from earlier it looks good on both print and digital and i think it's great for you know commercial stuff, uh, clean and minimal layouts, and I really like how it looks on some of these website designs. Also can shine as just some big thick type on album art like this, or using it for some branding purposes like on this super clean business card. It's all around really good serif and I think everyone should check it out. Next up is the all time classic, probably my most used font ever, Noia Haas Grotesque. I usually use the regular medium and bold versions, it pretty much never misses. It's basically just the print kerned version of what Helvetica became digitally, except just stock. It's current and tracked a lot better, so it's you don't need to manipulate it as much, and it looks better right out of the box. It's so simple and versatile. You can use it on posters for headlines. You can mix it with serif fonts, and it really lets them shine. And I usually use it for body copy at the very least, even if I'm using other fonts for the main part of whatever I'm designing. This one is a must-have. This one's more of a recent discovery, and I want to use it more, but I really liked how it looked. Uh, it's called Herb, and it comes in regular, bold, condensed, and condensed bold kind of like a fun modernized version of some of these german black letter fonts you see and it gives some stuff like a cool vintage feel and it's almost medieval feeling and i think this could work on a lot of different kind of niche branding and album art and cool stuff that kind of needs this feel or wants to stray away from some of the basic contrasty black letter font i really liked how they use it on this father john misty promo materials right here so this next one i actually found out about from my last fonts video i highlighted a different font called project blackbird and the owner reached out to me and he sent me this giant font pack to use. This one, the goalie, comes in regular italic, black italic, and it's such a fun sans serif. I've never seen one like this. It has so much more character than some of the boring, grotesque sans serifs that you see. And I'm really waiting to incorporate it more in some branding and other stuff that I use. Here's some examples that the actual typeface creator made to show how fun it is and the different cool characters that this font has. So shout out to Culture Type. Thank you again. Menno, this is one of my all-time favorites and I've mentioned it in another fonts video but i had to leave it in there's tons of versions on adobe fonts probably over 80 total typefaces but i like the extra condensed specifically i use it on a bunch of posters some stuff here use it in all caps and lowercase older posters newer posters it's one that i've been using for probably two three years now i really like how it was used in this reference material too pair it with this slab serif it looks really nice and this poster uh ram reyes overset text made and overall it's a great font to add to your library this next sans serif is faucet by Daniel Shear or Schreier. This font is so fun compared to other sans serifs out there. Daniel is also an independent type designer, so he'll be supporting a fellow designer, and he puts a lot of love into these fonts. From thin to black, and there's a ton of cool glyphs and stuff all in between. I really liked watching this font unfold on Instagram and seeing Daniel document the process. That was super cool. Like I said, I really love the alt characters and the glyphs this font offers, and it's just overall a super fun typeface. I've used it here on this Identity Crisis poster, and you can see this 
this alt E I really liked. It's almost like a backwards three. And I believe he offers a discount to students. So if you want to go pick it up and you're a student, I think it's worth it. There's another cool poster made using the font and it's a great one. The font you've all written essays in college and high school with, but don't write it off for your design work. Times New Roman is great. It has some sharp edges. And if you pair it with a grotesque sans serif, like Noya Haas grotesque or Daguler, it looks super elevated and it really lets the designs shine and has a more Swiss design typographic feel. And I think there's a lot of potential here. I even used it with Ariel and on this collage I did featuring Rodney Mullins. It looks great in some of these vintage ads like Coca-Cola. And definitely check out Times New Roman. You already know you have it on your computer. This is another one by Culture Type, that design Gagoli. When he sent me the pack, there was a few I found that I really liked and this black letter one was awesome. I instantly fell in love. Looks good in lowercase, all caps. And I really like using it with sans serifs. I always want to experiment more with black letters, but sometimes they can feel overused. But this experimental one is packed with quirks and it kind of has a modern edge to it. I used it in some of my more experimental design work with stretching type here, overlaid on this construction paper and used printed over some collage stuff. So this is probably my favorite font the past two years, at least in the top three. I used it on so much stuff called obviously another one by Ono Type Co. It has tons of different versions from compressed to regular, wide, extended, and all the way from thin to super. This typeface looks great on super fun stuff and I've seen it used in a lot of cool branding, especially in the food and beverage area. And I've also used it for pretty much a lot of my own stuff, my personal branding, YouTube thumbnails, poster designs, and different stuff around what I'm putting out online. Ariel, just like Times New Roman, there's a lot of freedom and room for experimentation when using system fonts. Everyone has it, so it's fun to implement and have fun with. From regular to bold, you can stretch it, manipulate it, and give it a whole new look. I did that in this Don't Bite poster. But even if you use it normally, it doesn't get in the way. You know, it looks good on a minimal layout, and you can pair it with different handwriting or serifs, and it's always a classic. I think it gets overlooked and sometimes shit on, but I honestly love Ariel. I really like what Pirate Studios did with it, stretching it. Their methodology was like, Pirate Studios is for everyone, Ariel's for everyone. One, so it's an awesome kind of design case study. Another one from Ono Type. If you can't tell, they're probably my favorite type foundry. On the podcast I did with James, he spoke about the amazing service he did on digitizing Hobo into a great modern version and bringing it to its intended glory. Cleaned up all the glyphs and just made it super nice. From light to black, this font is just so fun. Pretty much can't help but smile every time I see someone use it. It looks good in a bunch of different ways. You can use it on white, black, color. And there's even this super cool version he made called like Hobo Roco, I think that has these cool like wooden almost floral look to it very decorative and there's a lot of room for cool stuff you can do with it if you already know about normal hobo and you want a better version definitely check out this one editorial new this is awesome font from pangram pangram they also have a personal bundle that you can get for super cheap that has all their fonts in it to try out ultralight regular and ultra bold I like using and adding a stroke to it pairing it with some sans serifs like in this turnstile art it also looks super good without the stroke and the italicized version pairs nice on posters and other stuff. The normal version looks cool too and it has a lot of character to it and it's nice and clean but it also has some sharp edges and nice round parts to make it feel unique. I think it's a great font for all different types of design. Hero style, I've definitely talked about this one before and you may already know about it. It's super modern and subtly futuristic. It's an all-time classic, must-have font. It looks good in the regular and extended version. You see it a lot in extended medium and black. And those are my personal personal favorites too. I use it on this Western Digital project to give it a futuristic retro feel. It looks great on some old vintage stuff. I always like seeing it and exploring it on fonts in use. The Nike stuff used it in a super cool way here. I see it used a lot in like the electronic and house music world on cool album stickers like this. I think it's just a great font to have. You can use it for branding, poster designs, and whatever really. Last but not least is Dharma Gothic. Definitely talked about this one before, but it's my all-time most used font for posters. They have all different kinds of versions, so there's a ton of versatility here. I love the condensed nature because it naturally allows you to make it be super big and it works great for creating giant typographic posters. I've used it on stuff all the way up to what I've been creating recently to even some older stuff in the past. It's a must have and if you add a stroke to it, it kind of rounds it out and makes it look super nice also. I've even used it in some collage stuff like this hanging round design. I'm telling you overall, it's great for bold headlines, readability, and it's just an overall great font. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you want some more fonts to add to your library, you can check out this playlist here. That's it for now. See you next time. Peace.